In the shadows of the world's highest mountains, something massive has begun. China has officially started building what could become the world's biggest hydropower dam. In July 2025, the world's attention turned once again toward the Himalayas. But this time, it wasn't for the mountains, or the monks, or the myths. It was for a dam. A dam that, if completed as planned, will become the biggest hydropower project on Earth. China officially began construction on a mega dam in Nainki, a region in southeastern Tibet. This massive structure is being built on the Yarlung Zangwa River, one of Asia's most powerful and highest rivers. In India, it's known as the Brahmaputra. In Bangladesh, it becomes the Jamuna. This single river system supports over a billion lives downstream. The Yarlung Zangwa starts high in the glaciers of western Tibet and flows through narrow gorges, deep valleys, and finally reaches the plains of Assam and Bangladesh. It's more than a river, it's a lifeline. Now China is damming it, and the scale is almost incredible. Premier Li Chang himself attended the dam's groundbreaking ceremony and that's a big sign of how important this project is for the Chinese government. The project, which was approved in December 2024, has been in the planning stages for years. Once completed, it will include five major hydropower stations on the river. The dam is expected to produce three times more energy than the Three Gorges Dam, which is currently the world's biggest. But why in Tibet? Because it's known for its peace, spirituality, and landscapes, but beneath the surface lies something powerful, water. Tibet is often called the Water Tower of Asia. Its glaciers and rivers feed 10 major river systems that support countries like China, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, and more. According to Yale's E360 Environmental Magazine, these rivers provide freshwater to about 1.3 billion people across Asia. This project is a major part of China's plan to boost Tibet's economy while also meeting national clean energy goals. The government says it will generate enough electricity to power several provinces, while also providing energy to local communities in Tibet. The most shocking part is how much is the total cost of this project? About 1.2 trillion yuan, that's 167 billion US dollars. It's one of China's most expensive infrastructure projects ever. But with that price tag comes massive energy potential. While exact figures haven't been released, early reports suggest it will surpass the Three Gorges Dam's capacity of 22.5 gigawatts, making it the world's largest single energy generating structure. Environmental scientists warn that altering the river's natural flow could have serious impacts. It can affect wildlife that depends on the river. It may cause sediment buildup, which harms agriculture downstream. Tibetan activists and some global organizations argue that the local communities are not being fully included in the decision-making process. Many Tibetans believe the rivers are sacred. To them, building massive dams is more than just a construction project, it's a loss of cultural identity. In January 2025, its Ministry of External Affairs made a public statement, saying it had raised the issue with China and would monitor and take necessary measures measures to protect our interests. The Indian government is worried that the dam will give China the ability to control the flow of water into northeastern India. In times of conflict or drought, this could become a serious strategic vulnerability. By building the dam here, China strengthens its presence in a contested zone, while also sending a message. It controls the headwaters of one of South Asia's most important rivers. In a time when water security is becoming as important as oil, having control over a river like the Yarlung Zangwa offers both economic and political leverage. But what comes next? As construction of the dam gets underway, a broader picture comes into view, one that goes far beyond concrete walls and power stations. This project sits at the center of deeply rooted questions. How does a rising global power manage its natural resources? Who gets a say in shared rivers? And what happens when regional security, climate policy, and ancient cultures collide at 16,000 feet above sea level? The Yarlung Zangwa River, though now under active development, has long held scientific and strategic importance. It flows through a tectonically unstable zone, home to some of the world's fastest eroding mountains. For years, Researchers have studied the river to understand how landscapes evolve. The steep gradients and enormous kinetic energy in this part of the Himalayas have made it a natural focus for China's hydrological studies and energy planning. A key element often overlooked in public discussions is the complexity of managing river systems that flow across multiple political borders. China is the upstream controller of the Yarlung Zangwa, 
But the water doesn't stop at its borders. India and Bangladesh, both downstream nations, rely on the river's seasonal consistency to maintain agriculture, fisheries, and basic water access. In a changing climate, this lack of cooperation carries real consequences. Glaciers in Tibet are melting at an accelerated pace. According to independent satellite data from global climate research centers, ice mass loss in the region has doubled in the past two decades. This adds uncertainty to seasonal river flows, especially during monsoons, when downstream flooding becomes more likely. The new dam will have the ability to hold and release vast volumes of water. Without transparent data sharing or co-management mechanisms, India and Bangladesh will be forced to interpret Chinese actions on their own, a task made even harder by ongoing border disputes and limited diplomatic trust. At the local level within Tibet, discussions around the project remain tightly controlled. Independent environmental assessments are rare, and Tibetan civil society groups have limited space to express concerns. Local media coverage within China has focused on the benefits of clean energy and infrastructure growth, offering little visibility into dissent or ecological risks. Some Tibetan exile groups have released statements condemning the dam, calling it an example of what they see as extractive development by the Chinese state. These groups, based in India and Nepal, have asked for international organizations to independently investigate the project's impact on the river and surrounding communities. Even within China, not all voices are fully aligned. Hydrologists and ecologists in academic institutions have published concerns in peer-reviewed journals about over-reliance on large-scale dams. Studies have highlighted how megadams often lead to long-term ecosystem damage, economic inequality in remote regions, and greater vulnerability during extreme weather events. Yet despite academic criticism, political momentum behind the project is strong. The dam is tied to China's broader strategy of accelerating domestic green energy production. Alongside wind and solar development, hydropower is framed as a pillar of future national security, a way to reduce dependence on imported fuels while creating job opportunities in underserved regions. State-owned enterprises have already begun staffing operations in the region. Thousands of workers have been brought in from other provinces. Temporary housing, power lines, and communication towers have sprung up across Nainki in a matter of months. The logistics of operating at such a high altitude add difficulty, but also urgency. Harsh winters mean narrow construction windows, pushing the timeline forward at full speed, while the full capacity of the dam remains unannounced. Internal project estimates suggest a multi-phase build-out. This will allow partial energy generation within a few years, even before final completion. Transmission corridors under development are expected to link to the national power grid, carrying electricity from Tibet to central and eastern China. One important element not discussed publicly is the risk of seismic activity. The Himalayas sit atop a zone of active continental collision between the Indian and Eurasian plates. Geologists have long warned that building dams in such zones requires additional safeguards, including fail-safe reservoir management and downstream warning systems. If an earthquake were to damage dam infrastructure or trigger landslides into the reservoir, the consequences could be catastrophic. In 1963, a landslide-induced wave at Italy's Vagent Dam caused nearly 2,000 deaths. Though engineering standards have improved since then, similar risks remain real in high mountain regions. International agencies like the United Nations have frameworks for transboundary river management and sustainable dam construction, but enforcement is voluntary. Without participation from China, these standards offer little practical control. As global focus shifts to energy transitions and climate adaptation, what's happening in Tibet serves as a powerful example. Clean energy doesn't come without trade-offs. In the push to reduce emissions and modernize remote areas, there's a danger of repeating old mistakes, where large-scale development silences the environment, sidelines communities, and bypasses regional cooperation. The Yarlung Zangwa has carved its path through rock and ice for millions of years. Now, for the first time, its flow is being reshaped by policy, by politics, and by a race for power. What happens next will affect more than just megawatts and machinery, it will ripple across borders, cultures, and generations. The dam is rising, the world is watching, and if you found this eye-opening, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more real-world stories.